Hi everyone, I just wanted to cover how someone could start coding uh, during these times. I personally think that coding is the most empowering skill of the 21st century and I also admit that because it is one of the most demanded skills ever, uh, it might be a bit challenging to start because there are a lot of resources online, there are a lot of people speaking about it, there are different avenues that you can take. And I honestly wish that I saw this video when I was, you know, a really young programmer. Uh, but what I could say though is that once you start coding and once you start kind of like understanding this It can truly change your life because it did for me I this is it's it's the only reason why I have a job right now even with the COVID pandemic I wish this video kind of saves a bit of your time and uh, I'd want to start right now on how you can start coding so first thing that you need to do when you want to start coding is to understand why you want to code and I would like to call it defining your purpose right honestly it's fine if you don't have your purpose I will get to that get to that later but I think the reason why it's important to define a purpose or at least be aware of whether you have a purpose is because if you do have a purpose you have something that help like will keep you motivated while learning code you know because this activity if you're going to learn alone is going to be like mostly a self-motivated activity and if you don't have an end goal that you have in mind it might be a bit hard to follow through on this skill so for me it was you know um, learning how to initially it was just learning how to build websites for like this peer-to-peer -peer mentorship service that I was hosting sometime back then I got into like data analytics and then I got into like cloud computing and things like that but the what I want you to understand when starting code is that there are four main things that you can get into uh, and you know this this varies from person to person right so the first and the most common request that a lot of people have is how can i start uh to build a website for myself or how can i start to build a website for you know, my business or like a certain initiative there are specific technologies that you can learn you have to learn rather to kind of get into it and the three fundamental technologies are html css and javascript once you kind of learn those three things, you can really kind of break into like web development and, you know, build things for yourself very comfortably. Obviously, there are like levels to it later on, but I will cover that later. I think this is a very nice place to start. Uh, the second domain that you can kind of break into is mobile apps. Uh, obviously, a lot of people like run their clothing stores or like their initiatives or certain ideas on like mobile. I think it's a very commonly used platform and if you want to build an application for an Android device, you can learn Java. If you want to build an application for iOS or like Apple, you can learn Swift. If you, if you want to build an application one just one time to fit in both these ecosystems, you can use this technology called React Native. Uh, now there are pros and cons to using like, you know, either Java or like React Native and I will get to that later. But for now, like just keep in mind that these are the kind of things that you can dabble around with. And for starting like anything, any of these would be fine. The next thing and one of the most popular uh, like domains is is data science. It's it's something like that a lot of finance students, a lot of like, you know, economy students, any anyone who, you know, wants to dabble around with data, like and, and I think many jobs kind of need that skill too right now in the 21st century. And you know, if, if you have a lot of like work around analytics and if you want to break, break into business analytics and things like that, I think data science is one of the greatest domains you can break into. And the technologies that you can learn for that is Python, R and SQL. Those are the f most famous technologies uh, that, that are used in this field. And I think Python is the most popular programming language in the world. Honestly, once you, once you learn these things, you, you can, you can kind of use these or use these skills for different industries too. You can apply these skills in different industries. I think that's an absolutely beautiful thing. The next domain that you can break into is games. Obviously, like, you know, the 21st century is a very, very famous place for very passionate gamers. And I think if you really want to build games, you can use technologies like C Sharp, C++ and Unity. Um, Unity is just a platform to kind of like where you can use programming languages like C Sharp. I did like one tutorial once. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty fun. Like there's this rollable tutorial that you can kind of take first and it teaches you how to you know, use the engine, like the game engine really well to kind of like build gaming products. Just kind of summarizing the entire thing, you have four domains. So that's either like building a website, building a mobile app, building uh, a game or 
uh, you know, breaking into data science. And there are specific technologies that are underneath that. Do not be intimidated by these technologies if, if, this, is, if this is the first time that you've heard them. Uh, honestly, once you learn one coding language, it's really easy to jump to the other. So that also means that you don't need to be too stressed on exactly where you start. I think you just need to focus on starting in the first place, right? I would now like to cover what resources I personally used or like that I am a huge fan of at least. Uh, I have three, uh, three resources rather in mind right now uh, because I used these like when I was starting out and I absolutely loved them. I, it kept me motivated and, and you know, I really followed through with all these things. So the first thing that comes to mind is Code Academy. I, I took my first coding kind of like course on this. It was very, it was a very interactive kind of like platform. You get to code uh, like on the spot. They have like a sidebar where they kind of give you a briefing of like what the the coding section is about. And I think like it's, it's a really fun way to kind of learn code in the first place. I think, I think they've really done a good job with that. There, there are a wide variety of courses like uh, covering a lot of fields. And I think it's, it's absolutely brilliant in terms of a platform of learning. Uh, the next thing is educative.io. You can use this if you want to learn the really like strict theories of like, you know, different programming languages. They have uh, like pages for or pages for each subsection where they like give a very detailed understanding of each kind of topic. And they also have like a code editor in between where you can kind of practice code. So I find that really cool. I kind of use this to like, you know, brush up on different web dev technologies and programming languages. And if you are a, like a finance major or like, you know, if you want to get into data science, I think the best website that you can use is DataCamp. It's recommended by professors and McGill too when they, when they want students to start like a data science course. They also have this, you know, video before each lesson and they, they have a code editor in the lessons too. So you kind of get practice while doing it. So as, as you see, like I like a lot of resources that give like coding editors so that like, you know, you can actually practice code without just like having things stored in your mind. Disadvantage though, with all the resources that I mentioned right now is that, you know, for some people, it might be uh, a financial investment that you might not be able to kind of take up. That I actually have two solutions for that. So if you are a college student, you can sign up for the GitHub student developer pack. You just have to enter your school email, like a valid school email, and they will get back to you and just like enable the pack for you. There are so many free resources, like, you know, for things related to like learning code or like different technologies and like even like graphic editing softwares and things of that nature. I think it's a brilliant thing. It's one of the best things that I've, that has ever happened to me. I, that, that's how I kind of like, you know, went ahead with all these, like, you know, with data camp and educative. Uh, it provided, it gave me like the subscription for free. The second solution to the entire thing is kind of considering uh, a free option or like a cheaper option. So the first free option that I could think of is Free Code Camp. It's one uh, one of the most popular resources in the world for kind of starting off with computer science. I personally didn't use it, which is why I had, don't have it in my top three list. But I've seen a lot of talented developers kind of start off with um, Free Code Camp and you know, it, it has worked out really well for them. I admire these developers and I trust their word that, you know, this, this kind of resources is absolutely brilliant for someone starting off. The next thing is a cheaper option is Udemy. Uh, it's, it's basically like, you know, this website with, with a bunch of courses, you know, where like, you know, they have like videos on, on different technologies or like different, you know, frameworks and things like that. The only problem with that is, you know, you really have to like, you know, be motivated enough to kind of pull up the code and, you know, code while like the video is shown to you because otherwise you don't really learn too well um, because, you know, you can really keep a code uh, like video going going on in your screen. But, you know, I don't think that's the best way of learning because, you know, it's just in your mind and it's not within like your practice spectrum. Um, so like these are the these are my favorite resources for coding. There are a lot of resources online and I will kind of enter those in the video description right down below. Uh, have a look at that and let me know what you kind of think. The next thing is if you don't, the next question rather is if you don't have a, a set purpose, like what do you do, right? And I think the main question is, I think most people are going to have some form of purpose 
or some form of reason as to why they'll take up coding otherwise like you literally don't have to like it's honestly fine but if you are still interested in this this new world that i'm introducing to you the the, the solution that i have is that you can take an introduction to a cs course either at your university or or online the main online resource that i would suggest for an introduction to computer science is cs50 by david malan this is a course taught at harvard he is one of the most engaging profs in the history of mankind and i think you will learn really well from him i the the pros and cons of this of taking like a cs course is the the pros would be you know you actually learn the fundamentals of problem solving you get a very, very true understanding for like computers and like how the world of computers kind of work you'll actually know how to progress with code really well and you know even possibly build a career out of it because you get like you understand like where it, where it really comes from and i think the course that i suggested gives a very practical exposure to you know the world of computer science so like you're not going to lose out on you know learning different technologies and things of that nature but the problem with that is you know it might take a bit longer to kind of actually get very well grounded or like get get like a really good understanding with cs because it's a relatively large field and you know you universities take like three to four months to actually like you know do a do a intro to cs course right and these are like full-time students so it might take a bit of time and you know most of you if you ever consider taking like a course at university taking an online course beforehand might be a bit of a waste of time but on the flip side you might actually learn something faster than the rest of the kids in class so you know you need to weigh out your options and you need to weigh out your priorities on that end the other disadvantage is that you might not uh learn the technologies to a very deep extent because because what computer science kind of does is teach you how to use programming languages and technologies to solve problems that's basically what the course is about so that is very exciting because it really gets your mind working and really pushes you forward but at the same time you know it might not be like the like the best use case for you if you just want to kind of you know build an application or like you know just just put some code out in the internet yeah like those are the kind of like things you need to consider while you know choosing a cs degree so the pros will be you get a fundamental understanding of cs you also get a fundamental understanding of like problem solving so you might get better at coding and you might also kind of make a profession out of it the disadvantages is that you might not go deeply into specific technologies and it really takes a decent amount of time to get proficient in computer science and technologies at the same time so these are the kind of like avenues that you can take when you want to start coding i truly hope that this was clear enough for for enough people to kind of you know embark on this new journey that you might have considered at any point in time if you reach this point of the video i would certainly appreciate it if you subscribe and if you don't understand why i am harping on this skill as much there is another video that you can refer to uh, about why i personally think that everyone should start coding uh, i truly hope that this would save a decent amount of time and i truly hope that you'd enjoy the resources and the technologies that i spoke about uh, in this video Thank you so much and I hope you have a really fun time starting out. Do let me know if you have any any form of question. Thank you. <laughs>